Whitney. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. How's your How's your Wednesday? Is it Is it already Wednesday? It is Wednesday. It's It's great. Busy. Um, it's a busy day around here. There might be sounds in the background. I apologize in advance. Well, yesterday, I this week is the week that my daughter, who is two, now knows how to open doors, door handles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yesterday I was doing an interview and she fully opened two doors and came in the middle of it. And I didn't know she could open doors. So it was, it was very surprising. Thank you. Um, so I just want to read sort of your bio just so that folks who, who don't already know and love you can kind of hear what you're all about. Okay. Um, Whitney English is a wife, a mama to three, and serial entrepreneur. She believes that people matter, mercy trumps grace, and ordinary is beautiful. Whitney is the founder of Day Designer, a daily planner, and maintains a blog at WhitneyEnglish.com, where she works with her team daily to create products that help women live well-designed lives. You can keep up with Whitney on Twitter at Whitney English and Instagram at Whitney English. Yeah. So thank you so much for um, joining to, to talk today. We first met in person like six months ago or something at yeah. the Storyline Conference, which I think is kind of relevant to what we're going to talk about today because I remember you telling me how sort of going through this process of figuring out your business story and the story for your business was was pretty important in terms of catalyzing you to kind of that next that next level in terms of the impact you were having. So I guess I guess I'm just wondering if you can sort of share a little bit more about what it meant to figure out what you were really meant to do and how that has kind of impacted what you have been doing. Yeah. Um, well, Storyline is, I mean, for those who don't know, I mean, it was put on by Donald Miller, um, New York Times bestselling author. And one of the things he taught or teaches um, at Storyline is that um, you have to have a redemptive perspective on your story. Like you have to have, I'm going to put my phone on the ground so it doesn't vibrate. Um, you you have to take the, the hard things in life, like in order to to live a meaningful life, you have to be able to look at the challenges and he, he says, find the redemptive perspective or find something about that challenging thing. That's good. And for me, I mean, that just translates into my life is anytime, anytime I make a mistake or I have a failure or something difficult or challenging happens, what can I, what can I use um, from that experience to, to learn from and, and then move on and be better. And a lot of people are really resistant to change. And I think for me, change is, I, I love change because change means I'm becoming better hmm. and I can't become better if I don't change. And so I, I don't realize, I realize it's not like a direct answer to the question you just asked, but, um, I mean, that, I think that's sort of how I look at life and, and business and my purpose is, um, I don't have it all figured out. Um, I'm probably not called to this earth to do just one thing and, and just have one purpose. But I think that these little challenges are in life because they're, they're directing me there. They're, right. these are the lessons that are, that are pointing me to where I'm supposed to go and the experiences that I'm being gifted with challenging as they may be that I can use to help others. And that's, that's what purpose is. So you, you say, I mean, I don't want to put words into your mouth that maybe your purpose or one of your purposes is to help others design or help others live well-designed lives, right? So how did you, how did you figure that out? Um, I, I think it was through a series of challenges that, that I experienced. Um, my priorities were out of whack. This is, this is about five years ago. I had, I had a different company um, that I'd had for 10 years. It had been really successful until it wasn't. It started falling apart. Hmm. I couldn't figure out how to put the pieces back together, put, couldn't keep the wheels on, so to speak, and and ended up filing bankruptcy on that company. And and it was such a painful time in my life. And I remember thinking at that, at that point, maybe I can use the pain to help somebody else. Hmm. Like, it wasn't like I was trying to pawn the pain off on somebody else. I wasn't walking around like a victim or a martyr whining about what I was going through. I mean, it was, I was owning the story so that the story didn't own me. Hmm. And part of that was looking around and saying like, who else is struggling? Who else is hurting? And then just going and helping them because at least that 
at least that created smiles, at least that brought hope. And when it brought hope into other people's lives, I started to be able to buy into hope as well. That if I could help somebody else with the experiences I'd had, that someplace out there, there was somebody who was going to be able to help me get through that experience. And so just, it's just, it's, it's kind of a, I, it, I don't believe in karma. I, you know, I have a much more evangelical perspective on life, but it's kind of karma. Like if you mm. put, if you put good out there and help somebody else, it's, it's going to come back to you. Yeah. And, and I think that's purpose. I, I have a friend, Jess Lively, and she says that purpose is, it's a formula of what you are best at plus helping others. And what you're best at plus helping others. Huh. Yeah. And so anything that we've experienced, good or bad, is something that, I mean, experience is what makes us better. So if I take the challenging experiences, the things that I know, and try to help other people, then I'm fulfilling my purpose. And um, so so the well-designed life thing came about um, just realizing and learning that my priorities were so out of whack. And if I could put everything, if I could put those priorities back together, put those things back in order, um, life would be prettier and more livable and more meaningful and um yeah more purposeful more fulfilling Hmm. so that's that's where that came from I love that idea that owning owning your story so your story doesn't own you that's a really cool phrase um so you know one of the ways so you do well why don't you tell us all the different ways kind of you work with people because I I read a little bit about that Mm -hmm. when I read your bio but I I think it would be helpful if you kind of just share because my next question sort of digs into that a bit more but probably folks don't even understand the extent to which you're helping and coaching other business owners as well right yeah, so I, I own Day Designer, which is a daily planner company that's been in business for about four years. Um, we sell to Anthropology, Indigo in Canada, um, and have a line of products licensed in Target that are sort of a sort of a good, better, best brand strategy. That's sort of a good, um, and then our flagship line is our better, and we're working on debuting a line of high end products. So that's that. And I have two of your planners. I have the oh, one that is weekly, and then I have the daily one yeah. because I can't decide which I prefer. I know. I hop back and forth. I switch back and forth. Right. Yeah. I've got a desk full of stuff. Um, so, and then, and then on the other side of that, I do, um, I do some business coaching, which is is definitely a journey because no two businesses are the same, just like no two human beings are the same, and so. Um, when a business owner comes to me with a challenge, um, it, you can't put them in a box. You know, I, I can say like, here's how I design my day, you know, with a planner. And, and that's a pretty, you know, formulaic method. Um, but business is a lot more fluid, a lot more dynamic. And so, um, but I, I love talking to people. I mean, I love just saying like, what are you struggling with? And then brainstorming you know, 20 different solutions. Like, could it, could it be this? Could it be this? Could it be this? And then getting some pushback. Well, no, it can't be this or it can't be this. It can't be this. And sometimes I push back. Sometimes I say, Oh, that sounds like an excuse, you know, but normally just the coaching thing, just it's a conversation. It, it happens over time. It happens when, um, they need it. It's not, I, you know, I don't have a rigid schedule where I talk to somebody once a week, you know, for an hour a week or anything like that. So mm-hmm. It just, it's helping them evolve back to using my experiences. Okay. And I, I read somewhere that you say that kind of the first step in helping folks take their business to the next level is helping them define their core. Mm-hmm. Um, can you walk through what this means? I'm assuming <clears throat> core is like purpose, but maybe it's different. I don't know. T- tell me what core means. <clears throat> that was something that came out of that struggle in my, in our, in my life um, mm. five, five or so years ago. Um, I realized that it sort of started with authenticity and I realized that in my old company, I, I wasn't really being transparent and, and, um, I wasn't being authentic. I wasn't being true to myself. I wasn't standing up for the things I believed in. I was basically trying to be something I wasn't, I was trying to be a logo. And I sort of, one time, one time I said to myself, it's time to step out from behind the logo. It's time to stop being a company and start being a person. Wow. Huh. But I was young when I started that business. And so I didn't know, like I, I thought that if you're a company, like you're supposed to do all these things, you know, like you're supposed to 
you know, jump when people say, say jump. And I didn't realize that um, as a business owner, I have a voice and a right to, to, to state that. Um, and there is sort of a strategy to that. It's not, um, you know, the bigger a company gets or a small business gets, um, the harder it is to be transparent. The harder it is, the more, the more there seems to be a lot at risk when you take a stand on something. Mm -hmm. But um, another thing I say a lot is that your goal as a brand is to draw people to you or drive people away. It's a draw, branding is a draw or drive thing. So when you take that stand, um, you're basically putting, putting a message out there that's going to um, put people on one side of the fence or the other. Mm -hmm. And you're going to end up with people who don't like you or your company, and that's fine. And then you're going to end up with people who do love you and your company and are passionate about it and are going to be willing to. Be. And that's better than having people just kind of sitting on the fence, like being okay or not okay. You know, right. that's better than having people go, ah, uh, yeah, they're okay. That's that company's okay. Right. And so, so the whole define your core process, um, was really something I went through myself trying to figure out like, well, who am I? So if I'm supposed to be a transparent, authentic brand, you know, who am I? Like, what am I supposed to be? And I was so lost behind logos and companies and what people were telling me to do that I didn't really know who I was. So I, I, I core is, is basically three things, um, at the, at the very core of it. Um, it's, it's your, it's your passions, which I'm not big on. That's the, that's the least important one. I'm not one of those people that thinks following your passions is going to, you know, lead to a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Mm talk about more more about that if you want to um it's your it's your powers or your strengths um um your passions your powers um and your principles or your values the so what are the you know top five things that you um that uh, determine your act that drive your behavior mm -hmm. your values drive your behavior we can't act apart from our values and so recognizing what those are is really important um, and when we operate from our strengths and our values and we wrap that in the concept of helping others, which is your purpose, I mean, that's what, that's what a core is. So I actually have a, a, have a diagram. Um, it's a Venn diagram and it has your passions, your strengths, your, or your powers and your principles or your values. And that's the, the Venn, the Venn diagram is the very, very center of it. And when you wrap all of that in your purpose or the concept of helping other people, then you know who you are. And then you can say, this is how I operate. This is how I was made to operate. This is how I was born to operate. Um, these are things that happen instinctively in me. I don't have to control them. This isn't an act. Like this is who I am. Hmm. And then when you can do that, it, life just gets to be a whole lot easier. So, okay. So talk to me more about this idea that passion doesn't lead you to your pot of gold. I love that. Yeah. That's my soapbox. Really? Um, yeah. I mean, because the world is full of people saying, you know, follow your passions, do what you love, the money will follow, follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like it's very counter um, counterproductive to the concept of purpose because your passions are all about what you want to do and purpose is all about helping others. Mm -hmm. And so I, I talked, I mean, a, a problem I see in, in small business owners all the time is, um, you know, somebody will email me and say, I'm... I'm following my passions. I'm doing everything that you've said, Whitney, and I'm following my passions, but it's still not working. Why not? And um, it's because I, it's, you know, I try to be gracious when I say it, but it's basically because I've never said follow your passions. I've said follow your strengths and, um, you know, look at your values and honor those. But passions, you know, what you're interested in isn't necessarily what your ideal client or your, your customer is going to be interested in. And you can't, you know, you see it, you see those companies that are just like pushing products on people. Mm -hmm. And those are the companies where someone is like desperately trying to follow their passions and said, buy this. Like, I love it. Why don't you love it? Mm -hmm. Buy it, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, instead of, Hey, how can I help you? Like, what are you struggling with? And do I have any experiences or resources that can help you there? And do you want help? I'm not going to try to help you if you don't want help, mm -hmm. you know, but I mean, that's business. That's business at its core, I think, is, mm. is looking, um, looking at problems and saying, you know, is there value or money or profit or revenue to be exchanged in solving that problem for somebody? 
So then, okay, so in contrast, when you when you are kind of operating out of your core or you are thinking about your purpose, how does that sort of take you to, you know, greater revenue or kind of the financial freedom or the financial success that you hope for in your business? Mm-hmm. How do you how do you think about that or how do you coach your clients mm-hmm. in terms of that? Yeah. Well, for one thing, um it makes it makes your job easier hmm. because you're operating out of who you um, naturally and instinctively are, as opposed to trying to be something you're not. So it kind of puts the wind at your back in terms of your energy and allows you to distribute those resources, um, hmm. make better investments with those resources, so to speak. Hmm. Uh, another thing it does is it really does, um, it really does kind of draw a line in terms of um, branding, and it really helps you create a strong and powerful brand um, because it puts people on one side of the fence or the other. I mean, they either like you or they don't, they love you or they don't, you know? And so you just, but it's going to take somebody taking a stand for people to, you know, go to one side of that fence or the other. So, I mean, those are two things off the top of my head that it does. So do you, okay. So in your own business, have you seen, in the last four or five years, examples of where or moments where you've basically had to just cut back even more to, you know, make sure that you're really doing what you were meant to do and doing that Mm -hmm. has actually, you know, taken Mm -hmm. the revenue up. Is that, is that an example of what you're saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that I've, I, I don't know that I've had in the past four years, I don't know that I've ever sort of stood in an intersection and said, I'm going this way, not that way. Mm -hmm. And then been able to draw a direct line to revenue increase, um, because I kind of think that the things that we do today impact are, are the results we get six months from now. Um, even though I've got people coming over later, we're going to film a fun little um, April Fool's Day, you know, video thing to debut this Friday. Um, it, it, that feels like it's a it's a short term play. We're filming a video today. We're gonna launch it on Friday, right, but really right. the effects of that video are going to to ripple, um, and we'll see effects of those from that six months from now. Um, and it's not a direct line. It's this ripple of especially in social media where you get engagement um, with people. You can't really see the direct effects. Um, but I think that focusing on your core and it's something you have to keep coming back to um because it's just i mean it's i call it you know it's like the movie up squirrel you know squirrel like you know or um right bright and shiny syndrome where you're like oh like oh let me go and it's squirrel and you just get distracted by whatever is coming your way Right. And as an entrepreneur, for me, that can be the next idea. Mm-hmm. And so the ideas are these things floating around out here going, oh, let's do this for April Fool's, you know? Mm-hmm. And fortunately, I have a team around me now that are like, hang on, like, do we have time to execute this? Is this something that's actually going to benefit us, you know? And, you know, and so they kind of keep me tampered down on ideas. But I think that, I think that, I mean, at least for me, that's the biggest struggle from focusing on my core. And it's, is the distractions. And those are the things that will lead me away. From, like, oh, this, somebody else is doing this, like comparison. Oh, well, then maybe I should go do that. Or, um, you know, I mean, just it, focus is so important, you know, and it's, and constantly coming back to your core is what creates that focus. And constantly, I, I did sort of an analysis of my Instagram yesterday and I realized I'm not, honoring my values in my Instagram feed. Like my message on Instagram isn't really aligned with, um, and it it happens because of fear. You know, I lose my, I lose, we all do. We lose our focus because of fear. Um, you know, it's just the bigger a company gets, the, the more, um, the more you're at risk for, you know, upsetting revenue and you, you build a company, you have revenue coming in and you don't want to lose it. And you start thinking, Oh, I want to do what my audience wants instead of I, I'm going to do what honors my core. Um, and so that's definitely been, and so that's just something that I, I constantly come back to for both my personal brand, Whitney English, and then also for the day designer brand. That's really interesting. We lose our focus out of fear. I think that resonates a lot mm-hmm. with me. I mean, I think just that, yeah, it's just the look squirrel idea, these new ideas, and you think how, maybe your audience really likes that or maybe they like that or maybe they like that and it's all coming out of this 
position of, of not really knowing and being scared they're going to mm -hmm. go away. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. huh. but just, I, I like the idea of saying, okay, what am I, what am I supposed to be focused on? And then instead of chasing a new idea, how do I do that better? Hmm. And it's going to involve change, you know, like the change makes us better, you know, so it kind of goes back to that, that concept. And how does it help other people back to the concept of purpose? Right. How, how do we make this better? How do we help more people, hmm. you know, hmm. and just, keep diving into that, that main focus. So, okay. So if I was one of your, you know, small business clients and I was sitting mm -hmm. across the table from you right now and I was saying, you know, rather than, uh, Whitney, I have all these opportunities on my, on my plate. I'm not sure what to do. You know, some of these mm -hmm. I think will, will bring me great profit. Some of them mm -hmm. I think are probably more connected to who I am. What mm -hmm. advice would you give me about how to think about those different opportunities? Um, I would actually walk you through an exercise, um, of, um, making a list of those items of all those different opportunities. And then in a column beside each one of those opportunities, write down the number of hours it's going to take you to fully execute that project or that idea. And then in a column beside that, write down the, um, maximum potential revenue or income you think you're going to get off of that. And then I would say, divide your revenue by the number of hours you're going to work and you're going to get a return on investment per hour and do the one that, you know, kind of falls at the intersection of, um, helping others, um, bringing you joy. I mean, you, you can't hate doing it mm -hmm. and then, um, helping others, bringing you joy. And then, and then that maximum revenue, you know, if you have something that returns and it's going to make you $7 an hour, it's, you know, no matter how much you love it, no matter how passionate you are about it, no matter how much it helps other people, you're not going to, I mean, realistically, you're not going to be able to build a sustainable life off of that. Right. So right. there is that intersection. Um, and I'm, I'm friends with Jeff Goins and he calls it, um, the passion competency demand model, or he, he talks about a Venn diagram that's, you know, what do you love doing your passion, which I'm, you know, not a big fan of that one. Um, what are you good at doing? So what are your strengths? You know, which I can definitely fall into that. And, um, what is the market demand? Um, and so, um, you, you definitely can't hate it. I, well, I'm not saying like, don't your passion can't be the number one reason. It can't be the first reason you pick something. Right. Um, purpose needs to be the first reason you pick something. How can it help people? Right. The second reason you need to pick it is, can it provide a sustainable life for you? And then the third reason is, can you stand doing it? Is it, you know, if somebody said, Whitney, you need to go train for a triathlon because it's going to help people and you're going to be able to make money on it. I'd be like, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I just can't like, like that's not gonna yeah. like me. Yeah. So unless there was like a really cool, fun person training beside me and like cracking the whip over my head, then maybe I would do it for relationship. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, an that's a really good exercise. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, um, sure. Can you remind people where they can come find you and learn more about you? Yeah. Um, Twitter at Whitney English. Um, I'm, I definitely love Twitter. It's, I, you know, I know pe some people do and some people don't, but it's um, something that's been great for me in the past couple of years, just connect and grow. So say hi on Twitter and um, then Instagram. I'm also a big fan of that. Um, love the pictures. So I'm on Instagram. If you want a conversation though, Twitter is the place to find me. So I'd love to connect either place. Awesome. Well, everyone will find you there and thank you. Thank you so much yeah. for, for chatting. Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.